Speaking of signal flow, you may have noticed that while we've been working on a lot of these ensembles, most of my problem solving has been in regards to signal flow. And it's not just signal flow of audio, a lot of times it's signal flow of control data. Meaning it's not just about whether the sound of the oscillator goes through the filter or not. Sometimes it's a matter of whether the tempo data comes from a control knob or the host. In both cases, it's a similar problem where you're just rerouting some signal flow. So I highly recommend that you really get to know the built-in module signal path submenu here. I've loaded a few of these for us right here, a selector scanner, which we've used a few times. We've really only used it as a selector. So we'll check out the scanner function. The relay module is a bit of a redundant module now. It's, it's here for backwards compatibility with older ensembles because it behaves slightly differently than the selector scanner. I know when I was updating some of my older ensembles to use the selector instead of relay, I had to reverse the inputs. The crossfade module has some unique options. We'll look at that. The distributor panner is basically the opposite of the selector scanner. It has the same sort of control input, but it's got one input and several outputs. So your control input decides which output you're routing to. The stereo pan module is really just a stereo two channel version of the distributor. The amp mixer we've used several times already. We'll go and load it up here with one fader hooked up to all the level controls, just as a little multi-channel safety mechanism here. And the last one in the list, it's a stereo mixer. It's basically the same, but it has a left and a right output and a pan control for each channel. Let's have a look at the selector. I have several oscillators loaded up here, so we just have some raw sound sources. So we can select between them with the selector. As we've, we've done in other chapters, we've basically been using it as a switch, sending whole numbers to this input to choose one input versus another. I'm gonna get some constants hooked up to these oscillators, make some noise. I'm gonna select all these modules and set them to mono right now. I'm gonna take the pulse going to the selector Sawtooth, hold down command to add another input. I'm going to plug that into my mixer. I'm going to add a control for the position of the selector. This is already a little different than the way we used this in the past. Before we used switches and buttons and gate signals. In this case, we have a fader. Notice that as I go from zero to one, it's fading between the two inputs. That's why this module is also known as a scanner. I hook up these other oscillators. You'll hear that I can fade between all four sources. Now, if I set the range of this fader, maximum of four, you'll hear all four inputs with a little bit of crossfade. But if I go to the wrap parameter here, that'll repeat my inputs. So if my range was more than four, as I scroll through, I'm getting the same four inputs repeating or wrapping. And of course, we've got some curve features here. None means that it would really be working just as a switch. The sine curve is going to give us a little more power in the in-between points, where linear is going to potentially get a little quieter in between when we're at the halfway points between inputs. So 
So right about there, if I switch to sine, it should get a little louder, which it does. So that's our selector scanner in a slightly different perspective than the way we've been using it up until now.